it might be ridiculous. Don't, don't <laughs> <laughs> I want to learn how to like sail a boat when I'm 50. I don't want to be <laughs> learning. Like, yeah, well, that's because you've been doing accounting for like 70 years and you're like, <laughs> maybe, maybe after Maybe after being a musician for 70 years, you might be different. Yeah, I don't see that happening. I think I'll stick to accounting things. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cool. I just want to switch fan off and put some background noise. Yeah, I do have people working in my house. That's so cool. If there are random thumps or that's could even have a child running in at some point, we'll see. No, that's not a problem. That's cool. Uh, awesome. Let's do this. Cool. Uh, so we're, I'm chatting again to, to Gareth. We kind of seem to be making this a little bit of a habit, which uh, I really appreciate. Um, and today we're discussing whether or not you're too old to start your qualification journey to be a CA. So this is something that um, I get emails from students or from potential students all the time. And I know, you know, Gareth, you do as well. Um, and the question is, I am in my late 20s or early 30s or mid 30s or late 30s or 40s even, uh, and um, I want to be a CA, or I used to do it, and I didn't finish the journey, and now I regret that, and now I want to go back, and is this a good thing? Is this a good idea for me? Will I be, am I too old to study? So I think just as a, like as a very basic, simple for someone who only wants to watch two minutes of our videos, are they too old to study, mm -hmm. to start their CA journey? How's it, Yvonne? Yeah, thanks for, thanks for having me back. I think it's always cool, cool to chat. Um, yeah, I think the short, the, the short answer is, is uh, you're never too old. Um, I, I think the, the questions I suppose we need to delve into is yeah. how does it fit into your life? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think we can maybe chat around a few of those. But as I say, short answer is yep. um, if, if, if you're keen to do it, if it's part of kind of where you want to take your life, mm -hmm. then, then, then we can make a plan. Yeah, um, and, I agree. And I think that's, that's the joy, I hope, of, of online learning um, yes, as yes. one component of it because it doesn't, it doesn't tie you down, but I think we'll, we'll get into that as yeah. we chat. But you have, you have lectured and spoke to and dealt with a lot of students who are, who are older, right? Like, you know, mm. up to, you know, your age, older, et cetera. And, and so have mm. I. So, I mean, this does happen, right? This is not like we have one person ever no, doing okay. this. This is a, this yeah. And, and to be honest, this is, this is some of the, my favorite parts of my job is, is the stories that come out because, yeah. Certainly, our program, um, there's, no, there's no kind of uniform student. I think maybe if you go to a res yeah. residential university, then it's kind of very cook it's cook cut yeah. and, and, well, it's a, I don't know, a 22, 23, 24-year-old, and everyone's come through the same system and the same process and the same background. And um, they, they often, I suppose, quite privileged in some ways that they have the um, luxury of studying mm. on a full-time basis mm. and, and, and there's that kind of stuff. And, and I'm obviously certainly not putting that down, but and, and for students who come through that, that path, I mean, I came through that path. I, I don't think I realized how, um, how fortuitous I was yeah. at the time. Yeah. But I think the, the, for, for everyone else, um, and as I say, it's my, the favorite, some of my favorite parts of the program, like it's just incredible, incredible stories mm. um, of, um, of, of mothers who, who yeah. work and have kids um, and study um, of, of guys who, as you say, like, I've, we've got plenty of students who are older than me. So um, I sit there as the head of departments and, and, and yeah. chatting to them and it feels a bit weird when, when, yeah. when, when there's a guy who's like 50, 55 years old. But, but we've got students across the board. So, yeah. so from kind of, um, I don't know, probably about 20, 21, 22, all the way up to, to kind of, uh, we've, we've had guys up to retirement, basically. Oh, wow. Okay. So some some yeah. people's retirement payout and pension is based on their qualification and the ending salary. So they, they want to kind of get that same qualification just up to retiring. And if they, and, and oftentimes being a CA will push them up to like double their salary wow. um, and then it'll almost double their pension. So just like really fascinating stories like that. Um, and, and as I said, it's, it's, it's quite incredible. I think the big question from a study perspective for, for me is it, it's not the age. It's mm. about it's about your life plan yeah. um, and, and yeah. why you want to, to do it. That, that's that's yeah. really the big question and Agreed. kind of how you fit it in with your other commitments um, because it's onerous. Yeah, uh, Let's that's be honest, right. we, we yeah. know, and yeah. this goes for any CTA that you do or, or any really accounting qualification mm -hmm. is it's going to probably take 30 to 40 hours a week mm -hmm. um, of, yeah. of your time. And I think with, with online learning, it's, it's certainly 
um, it's amazing because it's flexible. So you can find those 30, 40 hours a week wherever it is. So it can be on weekends, it can be mm. at night, it can be kind of before you start work, the day, yeah. or while your kids are asleep, kind of whatever it is. But, but if it's part of an important part of your life, um, then then it's, it's, it's doable and can be, be doable. It, it really doesn't yeah. have a lot to do with age. Yeah, I think it's I think the 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 fact that we can learn online is such a blessing because let's face it, if you do have a full time job and then you have to go after work to go sit in class somewhere until ten o'clock at night, that does make life you know that much harder. So like you know with with you with CA Connect, you've got you you've got class online classes, you've got access to lecturers, um, and it means you know if you're studying at eleven o'clock at night. Um, and you're struggling with something, you can send an email to someone. Obviously, you know, you don't have your lecturer sitting by the phone at 11 o'clock night, but it means well, you can send an email um, out. We're certainly available out, outside office hours. I suppose the one thing I would say is that with, I suppose the mistake that some people would make with, with online learning is that they would think it's kind of just them and the computer. Um, and it's true, yeah. And it's, it's, we'd, certainly on our program, we'd certainly encourage students strongly to get involved in the community. Yeah. Um, meaning to get to know fellow students, to, mm. to work in study groups, um, to, to, to get to know lecturers, to work with the lecturers. I mean, as I say, the lecturers consult after hours. Um, study groups, yeah. are, we've got phenomenal study groups, for yeah. example, with students on Zoom, um, doing questions, swapping questions, marking each other, having discussions, and, and like phenomenal stuff like that. So, so learning, I think it's critical to be part yeah. of the community. The community. And, and, and if I am older, uh, yeah, if so, I am so older, it's not like I'm going to be the only 35 or 40 year old. No, what, what we, year old. Got is we, we, we group the class um, in, in various segments, for example, um, geographically, um, because pre Corona, it was nice to get together and meet yeah. in physical um, groups, but also things like uh, parents groups, moms groups, um, okay. students from, really from certain universities. Yeah. And, and those groupings are, are incredibly powerful and potentially. Um, I mean, a lot of this is up to the students in terms of how, how they slice and dice things. We can, we can put them in touch. Um, but potentially, if there, there, there could be groups for, uh, for example, I don't know, over 40-year-olds. If, yeah, if yeah. students want us to do that. Or, or guys, for example, in more senior positions. Yes, um, yeah, we, get, yeah. we get guys, for example, who come from, I don't know, a CFA background or financial management mm, background or economics mm. background, um, very high up in firms. Um, and, and they've almost got a different perspective on the world that they bring to the class. And, and yeah. they might want to match with, with, with some other people like that. So um, the diversity is, it, it yeah. Really is incredible. Yeah. And I, I think you're hundred percent. I don't think, I don't care where you are and what age you are when you're doing a journey like this, being part of a community is so important, you know, that support. And like you say, if, if you're a mom and you, you can chat to, you know, other moms doing the same thing, you know, you're, you're, you're not abnormal, all your struggles, you can share the stuff you know, that type of thing, which is, which is incredibly valuable. I know, um, you are, are qualified pre, in, not pre internet, but pre all of this stuff, you know, don't admit this, Yvonne, don't admit it. Make, make a good job. <laughs> no, it's not, like I'm only 21, right? <laughs> pre is experience. Um, but, and I, I started my articles at 25 because, um, yeah, because I, I had to study part-time and I, you know, and I had eight years working experience before that. I felt old, mm -hmm. you know, I felt really, really old. Uh, you know, all the clerks starting around me were three, four years younger than me, but they were all full-time students. So the age gap felt so much broader because I had mm -hmm. so much work experience. And mm -hmm. if I'd have had communities at the time, I wouldn't have felt such a freak. You know, I actually, mm -hmm. I, I was completely mortified. And I think a lot of people feel that way. It's like humiliating. But now I should be on but my it's career path. I would. Yeah? I I think that also more used to be the case, like back yeah. in your and my day when we did did articles. Um, <laughs> I don't have makeup on, so I don't need to say anything. People can just look at my face. Um, <laughs> but I think that used to kind of be yes, the stereotypical true. pathway. But I think if you look at, I mean, we we've got some great relationships with the audit firms. We talk to them in, in terms of placing students the whole time, and and they love the fact that, that yeah. there's diversity and we've got older guys and younger guys and different guys from different backgrounds because it makes the qualification and the firm so much richer it's true. Um, when you bring those yeah. guys in and, and I think you'd be surprised the the as I said they, they love the diversity and and there is a lot of diversity in firms it's, it's one of the things that yeah. firms actually look for um, yeah. in recruitment they try to almost see how are, how are you different to yes. a typical CA yeah and and students who have that life experience as we say like the moms the guys from different backgrounds um the guys who've taken time off, um, who've, who've traveled, like all that stuff, 
mm. leads to kind of a, a rich and diverse character and the firms want that. Yeah. They need differentiators in yeah. this world. Yeah. So, and, and that leads nicely into one of the other concerns students have is, will a firm take me as a first year clerk? Um, salary aside, that's, you know, that's another issue, but uh, I, I do have a lot of students that say, okay, Vaughn, but I'm 30 odd or whatever, and I have other work experience, would firms still take me on as a first year clerk? Mm. And as far yeah. as I'm concerned, the answer is mostly yes. Like, yeah, I again, know. I think the, the, sh the short answer is definitely yes. I think um, firms are looking at, at a new world of work. Sure. Um, for, for, from, I mean, a, a variety of backgrounds, like if we talk about um, the fourth industrial revolution, if we now talk about Corona, um, if, if we look at so many of these different angles, the firms are saying, well, we need to adapt and we need to do things differently. We can't mm. look at things the way we've, we've always done it before. Um, yeah. and, and there's also, I think, there's scope within articles, and, and this isn't my expertise, but there's scope within articles as well to do different things. Mm. Um, where, where you talk to psych, it's not just necessarily this, this article's journey uh, of auditing um, that, that yeah. we have to do. And I think firms look at different placements in, in kind of these different areas of the firms where it's not just kind of this, this black and white, well, you must do auditing for, yeah. for three years. There are different options. Um, and, and I think, I suppose the other thing to mention in that sentence is the number of training offices that there really are. Uh, it, yeah. it's, we often look at this as kind of just the big four and maybe a, a couple a of others. others. Yeah. But they, I mean, if you look on Psyker's website, they, they list the, the training offices all over the country. There's, there's hundreds um, yeah. of, of the guys. And if you can do your research into kind of the needs of, of these training offices, um, yeah, we don't have to look at this as kind of this two-dimensional thing. There's, there's, there's a lot of options, yeah. um, as well as the fact that, that um, Saika uh, considers um, almost recognition of prior learning, yes. RPL, RPL yeah. um, which, which maybe we'll get into to, yeah. uh, shortly, Yvonne. But I mean, there's, there's definitely scope for Saika to recognize prior experience as part of articles. Um, yeah, which, which which I think is, I mean, for, for a lot of people, you know, we were talking a little earlier, for a lot of people, that is kind of a deal breaker. You know, I've been in a job, I'm a financial manager, uh, I want to qualify, but I can't go back and do first year, I can't go back and do first year articles mm -hmm. at a, you know, under 10,000 rand a month. Um, so w what you were speaking about, and, and I definitely think we want to, you know, we want to include Psyche more officially on, on a conversation like this, is um, Psyche is, is far more open than we probably have been experienced with them in the past to say, let's sit down and look at your experience, your work experience, and let's, you know, let's take a look at RPL in a, in a different kind of way. So I would absolutely, you know, to someone who's sitting there thinking that contact Psyche directly and say, mm. this is my situation. Yeah, no, we had a, we had a fascinating discussion um, where one of the ladies from Psyche, Tonya, came to, to chat to our students. And I think we went on for almost an hour and a half just chatting about the different possibilities. Um, and there's, there's certainly uh, specific steps that are required yes. to, to almost get recognized um, training contract or articles. But for the guys who've been in industry and had different experience, um, Psyche basically looks at it on a, on a kind of case-by-case -case basis. Mm. So if you, if you get hold of them, they, again, Psyche isn't just the firm. Psyche is open to looking at kind of a new world of work yes. and what you considered kind of relevant um, experience. As I said, they've got their kind of their set requirements, but then they also recognize that there is other stuff that may be equivalent. Um, yeah. And that's where, where RPL comes in. And I think um, Yvonne Yard would be, I think you'd, you'd enjoy chatting to, to Tony. Yes, for this I think we need to there. do that. Yeah. Tony is also open to, to chatting to them directly. And, and I think they should get... They yeah, should get absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, when, when a student contacts me and says, you know, um, whatever, you know, whatever age, and but I'm going to be... 40, 45 or whatever, when, when I qualify, um, although we don't really want to do this type of mess, the reality is um, if you qualify even at 50, you, you probably still have like 20 years work life ahead of you. You know, so if you're kind of going, well, I don't want to qualify because I'm going to be 35 or 40 and it's going to be too late, like too late for what? You know, you, you, you still have like a good 20, maybe even 30 years worth of, of, of work ahead of you. Um, and that's an enormous amount of time to enjoy and, and get the benefit from that qualification. And I think it's really easy to look, as you say, as the, at the cookie cutter students and go, well, you're supposed to qualify when you're 24, 25. And so if you haven't done that, then you've missed that window. Um, but I think, again, as you say, like the world is, you know, the world is like, is, is a totally different place. And 
you know, the amount of people that are shifting their life and career in their thirties, you know, um, because they've now got life experience and work experience. And this is actually, you know, I do want to do this. So I was, I was too young and I didn't really appreciate the journey and I didn't want to do it. I had other things to do. And now I want to go back and finish that up. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, one of the things I want to say to students is like, there's a lot of working years ahead of you <laughs> to enjoy that qualification, whatever age that is. And, it's, and, and I'd add to that, that I mean, again, one of my favorite things about my job is I hear about these students from, from just different backgrounds and doing cool things with their lives and yeah. making these changes. Yeah. Um, and, and so I suppose almost to, to give the guys watching some, some perspective, it's stuff that guys are doing all the time. Guys are kind of taking life by, by the throat yeah. and, and saying, like, I don't know if that's the correct expression at all, but they, they, <laughs> they kind of, they're taking control of this thing and they're saying, kind of, this is my life. Um, if, if, I'm, if I'm not happy with where I am, um, let me move. Yeah. Um, let me yeah. take yeah. it. And it's, it's, it's not going to be easy, no. but I mean, and, and this, this isn't even a, a CA or an accounting thing. This goes for just general life. I mean, I've got friends who, who are musicians who've changed to law. Uh, I've got yeah. friends who like from any mix of background, you, you, it's, it's, it's everyone's responsibility, I think, to, mm -hmm. to try and get their life to point in a direction that's meaningful for them. And if, yeah. if, if this, is, this is your chosen path, there's, there's nothing to, to stop you. And you, it's, it's, it's like, I, I don't know, I, I, I phrase it quite strongly. Sometimes I get into trouble with the guys that I, I work with and the, and the students, but I'm like, guys, come on. If, if, this is your, if this is your calling and this is important to you yeah. and this is, this is key for your life plan, then you've got to do it, man. Yeah, you do. Um, I agree and, with you. And it's like, there's no reason not to. Um, no. We've got a new world of, of, of work. We've got a new world of study mm. um, online. There, there really is no reason not to. Is it going to be tough? Yes. Yeah. Is it going to be worth it? I, I hope so. I agree. I, I think uh, I so agree with you. And, and um, possibly more specifically, I talk to a lot of women who are mothers and they, you know, they're kind of debating and, and, you know, as, as a human, but I think it's, especially as, as a mom, um, there's always that, you know, it doesn't make me a bad mom if I'm, if I'm sacrificing so many hours to my studying and how is this going to work? And, you know, what about my kids and stuff? And I think one of the things I say to, 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 to my female students is, we're, we're so busy telling the next generation of, of girls and, and our daughters that they can be anything that they want and that they must follow their dreams and that they're more than just wives and, and mothers. Um, that if that's what they want out of their life, if they want to be more than just a wife or just a mother and have that label, they can do it. But yet mom's not prepared to do that, you know? Um, and, and it's, it's interesting that like they often don't think of that because they're so busy sacrificing for their daughters. And I say, but the best representation and role model you could be for your daughter is going, you see, I, that, that's what I did because, because I, I believe you can be more than just a mom. I'm also more than just a mom, you know, and that's, that's the best role model you could possibly provide to your kids of say, exactly as you say, like taking life by the throat and going, this is what I want and this is what I'm prepared to sacrifice to make it happen. And you can see me doing this for my future, for our future, for our family. Um, I think it's a, I think it's an incredible thing to watch as, as a kid, your, your parent at whatever age, putting their money where their mouth is and going like, this is, you know, I'm, I'm worth doing this and this particular sacrifice. And again, it's just like, I'm, no way is that going to be easy. Um, yeah. So, and, I, and I think it's, it's a, uh... It, it varies from person to person. There's, there's certainly no kind of one size no, no, fits no. all. I think it's the, the difficult thing, and geez, we're going to get into philosophical issues here, but the difficult thing is that everything has a trade off and everything has a cost, but yeah. it also has a benefit. Um, yeah. I mean, if I look at my wife, my, my wife's a CA and she hasn't, um, she, I mean, she, she's been a stay at home mom since, since my kids were born. So, so six years in, um, she hasn't done any CA related work and she thinks it's the best thing in the world. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. We, We're fortunate in that that's kind of the, the, the right decision in our circumstance, um, but it's, it's no judgment or, or anything on anyone else. That, that's what's right for us. We analyzed our, our, our life. We, I mean, there's a big cost that I always tell my wife the biggest, the biggest line item in our budget is the fact that my wife doesn't work. <laughs> that, that's our biggest cost. Um, because, because I mean, geez, that, like yeah. how cool is it to have another salary, but, but we've looked at it and we've said, well, we've done the cost benefit and that, that was the right decision for yeah. us. And we prepared yeah. to take the fact that, well, we don't have another salary in the house, um, but it definitely comes with costs. And, yeah. and that's kind of the trade-off. And, and I, I think the mistake that a lot of, um, that a lot of young people, make, well, not even young people, any people, that they, they think they can have it all. 
I agree with you. We can't have it all. I agree with you. If, if you're trying to be kind of, I don't know, super mom, super worker, super, Student, um, super parents, everything, yeah. super everything, and trying to be everything to everyone, then you're going to fail. Yeah. And, and if, everything has a trade off. So, so go in knowing that you can do whatever you want, but also go in eyes open, yeah. knowing that what you do comes with a, with a trade off yeah, and make sure when you analyze your, your decision or, or your opportunity set, make sure you, you, you can, and it's as simple as writing a list, write down the costs and the benefits yeah. of yeah. doing each thing. Um, and, and take that decision seriously because you, you, you can't be everything to everyone, but you no. can probably do anything you want to. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and, and with, with us, we kind of went in the, the, the opposite direction because uh, I, I agree with you as much as you want to, you cannot have it all because there's only 24 hours in a day. So for me, you know, when, when we got married and, and we were speaking about the possibility of having kids, I said, I'm not ready to stop working to stay at home with the kids because I'm still exploring my career and you know, I, I don't want to do that. But at the same time, I don't want to only come home and see my kids for three hours at night. Um, so I know that I can't have, I, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. If I had kids, I would want to be a stay-at-home mom, but I don't want to give up the work. And so, you know, pretty much, you know, for, for, for amongst some other reasons, for, for that reason, we decided not to have kids at the time, because for me, the cost was, you know, the, the, the cost was, you know, in either direction, I wasn't prepared to give that up. But if I did have kids, I would want to stay at home with them because that's for me, the most valuable time you can spend. Um, so yeah, so it, I, I totally agree with you. There's no right or wrong, but there's a right or wrong for you. Mm. You know, there's no, you should do it this way. You should do it that way. There's a right and wrong for you. And I think I know so many women who are going, my heart wants that qualification you know i want to be more than this but you know is it the right thing for me to do because my community or my family or the society expects me to be this and i'm not that but then you have to deal with that heartbreak of continually knowing that you're living against who who you want to be so uh yeah i i totally agree with you cost versus do you do they do yourself a little swot analysis oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and look, to be honest this also isn't stuff that this is this is just general life stuff. This, this is, yeah. this is not CA specific. <laughs> yeah, this is what, what you're going to be doing the rest of your life. And I, yeah. and I think the guys that, that kind of really make successes of their lives are the ones who make good decisions, who, who kind of sit down and, and take this all into account really think about it, and, yeah. and really make sure at any one point that they're pointing their life where they want to go. But the mistake yeah. is where you just make a series of short decisions and then 10 years later, you're like, huh? How did I land? How did I catch you? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. That, I agree that, with you. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we kind of landed up being a little bit more philosophical yeah. than I intended to be, sorry. But I think it's, 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 it's all based on yeah, these relevant. conversations that I have yeah, with, yeah. with people. And these are real issues. These are real things. Mm. What, what, what both of us kind of wanted to address, though, was, um, uh, one, if you've never worked in accounting before and you want to be a CA, so I, you know, I have people that are like, well, I'm an engineer, or as you say, like musicians or like whatever, um, is it too late like, no, absolutely, you know, go start, start, accounting is not something that you had to start doing when you were three years old kind of thing. So that, you know, if you've never done it before, that's fine, go do it, not a problem. But one of the things that I, I, I caution students on is, I don't care what your work experience is, whether you're, you know, whatever you've been doing for the last X years of your life, right up to CFOs, you know, if, if that's the case, do not imagine that that's going to make your studying easier and that you're going to pass exams easily. You know, the, the experience indirectly, your problem solving skills, your ability to manage time and difficult situations and not panic under stress, those types of things are incredibly valuable. But just because you've been an accountant for quite a few years doesn't mean that you're going to pass the exams easily because it doesn't work the same, the same yeah. way. So be careful yeah. about thinking, oh, but I'll only have to spend two hours on that because I do it every day at work. Yeah. No, and we, I think that's, that's for us why we, why we introduced our six month bridging program, because there's a right. lot of guys out there who've, who've taken 10 years off and, and like, and high caliber guys. Um, but, but yeah, to like for, for something like us with the programs we offer, you can't just go straight into CTA um, after that. that. You, you kind of need a step up. You need kind of a, a bridge, a refresher, kind of something to firm up the foundations. Um, and yeah, I, I kind of wish it was the same. Like it, it kind of, there's a like piece of me be. inside me that's like, uh, you like, like I get your logic, your logic is good. Um, but, but it's, it's the, the, I think the academic world, it's, it's a different lever of rigor 
and it's a slightly different way of thinking. Um, and unfortunately, uh, another part of the academic process I don't like is the game playing in that yeah. there's very, um, there's a lot of time restrictions. Um, there's a lot of almost, it's, it's all the exam technique stuff we, we talk about. We're like, yeah. oh, it's a game. not quite the real world, but you need to be almost um, uh, groomed into that to, to, to yeah. be ready to, to take I that on. Um, yeah. And just as a, as a side point, it's interesting because I think we get a, a, a similar discussion where, with guys who repeat programs. Um, mm. what, what they often say is like, oh, Gareth, I got, say, 40% or 45% for the CTA and they're going to repeat. And they think repeating is also going to be easy. We say, no, yeah. if you're repeating, no. it's the same story. You've still got to work for your same 40, 45% again, and then and take then the additional, additional yeah. step up. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's a very specific and systematic process to, to, to get there. And it's, I haven't experienced a student, um, in, in your example, that kind of someone who's taking 10 years off, who's kind of just walked into the academic world and just been like, wow, this is so easy. So easy. Um, yeah. As you say, there's the indirect um, things like problem solving and, and mm. kind of critical thinking and, and those kind of things that, that will, will stand in good stead and maturity, um, mm. incidentally, is a big mm. one. But, mm. but from a direct point of view and the rigor and the, and the content and the technicalities, um, that's, that's stuff that, that's, yeah, you, you, can't, you can't fast track or, or no. make it easy. As such. No, no I, I totally agree with you. The nature of the exam, the nature of the outcome is not the nature of the work that you do on a daily basis. So you have to make sure you understand, yes, I know debits and credits, but how, what do I need to do to get, to give it to the examiner in the way that they're looking for it in that time, in that space. Da, da, da. So yeah, that's, that's something that uh, I caution students don't budget your time according to I'll need 40% less time than the average. Student. I will add to it though. I think it's something that the psych is certainly aware of. It's, it's yes, something I'm looking very. At, at with them. Um, part two of the board exam, I think they've, they've got more aligned with yep. the world of work. Um, yeah. And they're, they're looking at changes to ITC as well. I think yes. I, I'm on kind of a panel with all the heads of department from around the country, um, certain working groups, and that they're looking at changes to ITC. Yeah. So I think the, our conversation is definitely applicable now, but I would, I would hope in five years we might be having a different discussion. Uh, I, 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 I didn't really want to go there <laughs> because, I know, because I, I'd like the challenges around that and like what does that mean to me. But I totally agree with you. It's like it's definitely looking at it going, we need to – you know, we need to bring it up so that when you're studying, you can naturally go into the workplace, yeah. not, okay, now forget everything you knew, and this is how you do it. It's totally different. doesn't look anything like your exam, uh, you know, et cetera. So, so yeah, there, there definitely is. But, but for, for someone who's in third year now, like, don't be waiting until that happens. <laughs> yeah. You want to get through ITC and APC yeah, before yeah. that happens. So, like, don't, don't do that. I think the, so, yeah, not, um, not, a, not a massively long call today, but I think to, you know, there is nothing wrong with you. You're not going to be a second rate citizen or a second rate professional because there definitely is a feeling of inferiority or I'm starting this late. You bring as an older student and as an older professional, you bring something to the table that someone who, you know, has done this since they were 20 doesn't, you know, your experience, your life, your story, uh, you know, all the stuff that you've gone through, um, makes you incredibly valuable in a totally different way. There's no better or, or worse. Um, you know, the, the salary challenge is, is, is definitely there and that's not something, you know, if you know that you're going to have to do that RPL side, you need to make allowances for that and you need to figure that out. But my message to, to people is if, if it is something that you want to do, it can be done. You're not too old to do this. Just get make sure you get the right resources, you know, go find people that will help you and, and get the job done, you know, just. Mm. No, no. And I, and I think I, I would, I would add to that. I hundred percent agree. I would, I would say, say to the guys, speak widely um, to, and, and get yep. kind of the information from guys in industry, the students you've studied, the, I don't know, guys like us, I suppose, speak widely, but then I think your decision shouldn't be, Kind of a weighted average of what everyone says it, it should be your decision i think yeah, that yeah. that's important because it's, it's, it's your life and your decision um and and then if that is right for your life then kind of move mountains to do it um because it's not going to be it's not yeah. going to be easy but but it, it, it's doable and and i think be, be proud of who you are and your background because that's yeah. what's that being the better you can be you and just maximize mm. on you 
the, the, mm. the better you're going to be as, as someone who adds value in society. And, and, and yeah. that's something you've got to run with. Yeah. And you, you mentioned earlier, so I just want to finish off with that. You mentioned earlier, you know, people who've taken a couple of years off of studying or, you know, life happened or whatever the case is. Um, so someone who maybe, you know, got an accounting or a finance degree or whatever a couple of years ago, these are types of people who should contact you, right? Because the bridging course may be, mm. the bridging course may be, they don't need to, because I think if they go to a lot of other other universities, they'll kind of have to do the year bridging course or they'll have to redo third year yeah. so, or whatever. Uh, I mean, we, like literally when we developed our program, our, our program in a lot of ways, if I run this, this discussion is almost like so close to home because <laughs> this, uh, uh, the way we designed our program w was for these guys. And right. for example, if you look at other universities, their bridging program is essentially, um, it's essentially the third year. Yes, of, it of is. Yes. With our bridging program, we said, listen, we don't need, the full third year. We look at it more from the point of view of how do we get you best ready for our CTA? Right. What are the key things you need yeah. as your foundations and as a refresher? And that's why we can mm. do it in six months. Mm. Um, and, and, and we said, well, there's this, this whole cohort or category of people who don't need to go back and do the whole third year. Right. They've, they've got tons of experience. We yeah. just need to give them a little bit of a, a, a leg up, a bit of a foundation yeah, just off, to make yeah. sure they're solid when they go into in, into CTA. So, and, and our bridging course was literally designed around designed that. For that. Okay. Um, so so if those yeah. guys want to um, get, get hold of me um, or, or chat about it, yeah, uh, yeah that, would, that would be a cool yeah. conversation. Um, yeah. Because it's, that's probably, I don't know, 40 to 50% of the guys on our bridging course fit yeah. that, that category. Okay. So it's actually, it's more normal than not normal, I would say. Right. Yeah, that, and then that's incredibly valuable to know. Because I think if you're kind of coming into this from the outside, honestly, CA Connect is not something that you'd really know because you're thinking UJ, UCT, UNISA, whatever the case is. So um, most of the people that I talk to and that are going, oh, I want to study this, they don't, you know, they don't, they don't know you exist because you're not a university per se. So it's kind of off the, it's not what people know, you know, like yeah, if you've yeah. never been in accounting and you've come from being an engineer, how on earth would you know this? So I think it's yeah. very valuable, as you say, do your research, find out. Um, but that type of, this type of solution could be the right thing for you based on, based on your stuff. And the best thing yeah. to do is just get hold of you and find out. Yeah. 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 Awesome. No, 100%. And it's, and it's, and it's something that a lot of students have done. I mean, I think yeah. we, we look at, I mean, we've currently got about a thousand students. So it's, it's also, even though people might not know about us, it's also, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a community that a, that a lot of people have dived into and, yeah. and, um, We've, we've, we've got another cool um, resource, also some of our um, alumni discussions that we've mm. put up recently. Yes, um, yes. We speak to past students. And I think, Yvonne, you might have put that up. And it's, yeah. it's also on the, the CA Connect website. So that's also something yeah. um, very valuable. Something cool to look at because yeah. I know you, you, yeah, you, you want to get kind of diverse opinions. And, and yeah. hopefully that, that, that could be something that's useful. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Well, thank you very, very much for, for, for your time. I'll let you get back to your freezing weather. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you get back to your heat. Yeah, I need my I need my fan. So I need to switch the fan <laughs> on. <laughs> awesome. Again, thank you very, very much for your time. Um if if people are are looking at um you know are looking into like where do I fit in terms of my experience and, and you know can I study and where where do I fit it, just send you an email for goodness sake. Just, yeah. you know, just sure. send you an email. Um yeah. and and you'll you'll you can take it from there. So yeah. yeah. Have an awesome weekend and oh, thanks, uh, thank Yvonne. Yeah, always good to always good to chat. Yeah, we'll chat again soon. Thanks.